I'll call it to order uh, 7.01 or 2 by our clock. Um, public comments? Leon, you want to say anything? No. <laughs> just happy to be here. That's, that's a safe, <laughs> safe position. It just so happened to be I was able to look at the newspaper and look at everything and see that it was a meeting tonight on, and, and I was able to fit it in. Okay. So, Thanks for uh, coming. Does, does everybody know Leon around the table? Kim introduced yes. herself. Maria, do you know Leon? Yes, okay. of course I do. Uh, yeah, okay. My policy buddy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> sure. You didn't know him from other reasons. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, I guess we'll introduce ourselves in case the camera actually hears us. Uh, I'm Ray Molino, the North Bennington Prudential Committee Chairman. Maria Stelly, board member. Kim Crawl, board member. Tim Schrader, board member. Uh, Mary Rogers, treasurer. Uh, Lori Elwell, district clerk. Tim Newbold, head of the village school. Matthew Patterson, board member. All right. And we have one member of the public here, Leon Johnson, a member of the SU board and the Mount Anthony board. And are you on the CDC? CDC Still? and the North Benedict Rep. Yep. Okay. Cool. Thank you. So, uh, finance, treasurer's report. Um, I will, two comments. Uh, one, uh, based on the warrants that you have in front of you for this month, um, I drew 45000 from our line of credit mm -hmm. uh, to cover ex uh, what we need to, so as to not dip into the funds that are really set aside for building. Yeah. Um, second thing is last time, last month I indicated that we had only two properties left with delinquent taxes in prior yes. years for the school. Right. We did have a successful tax sale for one um, property that was in Shaftesbury District 1 and a resident um, was a, the successful bidder on that property. Um, so I sh we should be getting our delinquent taxes, taxes. on that Great. from Kevin O'Toole attorney anytime. The other property who owed uh, in total about 10,000, um, but about eight was due to uh, the village school. Um, did not pay the entire bill, but paid enough that the village, the school uh, portion is now paid off. So you will see $8,000 plus being deposited, well, already is deposited, um, okay. that the trustees uh, uh, approved. That will come in October. Last, yesterday. October. So at the moment, we have a mere less than a thousand dollars, about eighteen hundred dollars wow. that is in are delinquent you, are you taxes. Kidding me? That's all. That's it. Of course, we have to start a new year. So we need to get to <laughs> well, zero of course, first. But, but that's pretty astounding. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. What was the address of that property that sold? That was sold was um, 33 White Creek Road. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, All right. Since we haven't seen a budget status, <coughs> then do you have more to say? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, no. Well, that's okay. it. Okay. And I was looking at that report, and uh, so you you took out this money from the line of credit for yes. October. For October. Okay. Yes. We still have a little over 150 thousand left right. on our line of credit. Should we need it? I don't anticipate that we may. Uh, it just all depends on how, uh, at, at what pace the current year taxes come taxes in, coming. and they are coming in at a fairly decent clip right now. Good. Well, it always helps to remind people that they are paying six cents less than they did last year. Yes. Maybe that'll bring more people. Well, eventually, With joy on their face yeah. or something. I am encouraged that a few properties that I had trouble locating last year and were delinquent for some months, uh, I know they have their tax bill, and uh, three at least that were delinquent now are escrowed. And their escrow companies already sent their report, and those properties were on the report. So. That's encouraging. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have a question for Mary? Um, 
we had a random call at the school asking yes. for you. That was a person, so just in case so you do you get any more. I w yeah, I want to know what you'd like me to do. Well, with, I don't I know if I want to give out your personal our, number. Our, the phone number is right on That's the right tax off. bill. Okay. okay. And <laughs> when, I find, when I did speak with the woman, okay. she said, oh, I saw a number there, but I didn't know it was you, so I didn't want to call it. Okay. And he said, no, that's why it's on the okay. tax bill. Good to know. Thank so, you. Yes. If, if anybody cares, I just figured out how to get the whole packet. Did you? Yes. Yeah, Can you share? I just sent everyone an email with a link. Thank you. Okay, to thank the you. Packet. I just re did a reply all to Ray's last email to all of us. Okay. And um, yeah, so Karen at SBSU sent us an email with an agenda in it, and in that agenda, there's a link to the packet. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Oh, okay. Well, sometimes that works. Click here for packet. It says. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm usually going to the, you know, to the, the site. The site. The site. Yeah. I'm looking for. It. They don't tell us when they're changing these things. All right, so uh, consent agenda, which consists of the warrants, which I will read out. I won't have kind of time to see it. <coughs> One warrant is for, which is uh, number voucher number eight <coughs> for the year. <coughs> Excuse me is um, stipends to the board, there's stipends for the year, and uh, a check to Mary for a portion of her salary. That is um, two quarters. Two quarters. Two quarters. Thank you. And then the uh, next warrant number, voucher number 1,000 is actually the payroll taxes associated with State and federal. And then warrant number 2005. One thing about getting old, there's no moisture on your fingertips anymore. It's hard to get paper to separate. Is a warrant for the board secretary, tuition for one extra student at Shaftesbury School District that we didn't have paperwork for last month. Um, and then uh, reimbursement to the supervisory union for school board insurance and uh, cyber liability. Okay. And then uh, tuition payment to the village school for the month of October and uh, the, the reimbursements we agreed upon last month to the village school for items that we consider to be our responsibility as a landlord. So um, I would make and the then motion. there's the minutes from last month. Should I read these? Maybe I should since no all, we all have the packets we have now. We all have the packet. We'll have it. Yeah. Okay. I would so, make a motion to accept the consent agenda. I'll second present that motion. It. All right. Comments? Questions? Further questions? Uh, call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Policies. Now there are three listed here. Warning 5180, the tobacco prohibition. Oh, and then there are two to adopt. Um, 7192 corresponds to the board and 7100 board member education. I would like to have a little discussion about board member education because I intend to vote against it. Um, the other two I have no issues with. But I'd like to have a discussion about 71. Please discuss. All right. So here's the, here's the deal. This policy 
talks about all board members. It has no legal references in it. The one legal reference that there is is Section 561 of Title of you know, Title uh, 16, and it says at least annually the chairs of each school board and the chair of the supervisory union board and the superintendent shall jointly participate in at least eight hours of professional training addressing all the things that are listed in this policy. Uh, that's, that's required by law. Um, this policy, the preamble is fine because it says we wish to encourage, as I, let me see if I can find the policy. Okay. To encourage and support board members' right. efforts to remain knowledgeable. Sure, and I, I have no problem with that. But then it says individual board members will take advantage of opportunities, and those opportunities are re the responsibility of the superintendent and the SU board chair. And the statute of responsibility is on the board chairs and the superintendent because they have to get together to have these, uh, this training. Um, I, I don't have a problem if we change the language to say individual board members are encouraged to take advantage of opportunities, but the way it's stated, I, I don't agree with it at all. There are also often members who cannot take advantage of those things. This is not a shall. It's a will, but um, I don't like directives from whatever source this is and uh, that don't make any sense because they don't tie the statute very well. Nor are they going to be enforced. No, they won't be enforced, but somebody may enforce them in the future. Yeah, I, I take exception to that, too. Practically every single thing they've ever scheduled has been at a time where I've yeah. actually been teaching myself and yeah. I can't cancel my classes to right. this stuff. And then the other day there was, a, it wasn't a board training, but you could have taken it to be a board training because it was the BSBA local regional uh, training. I intended to attend, but when no one was able to go with me, I was like, yeah. I've, got, I've got work to do here, so I, I stayed home. Did it in school. And I apologize, thinking thinking that I was going to be able yeah, to make no, it, and then I realizing I was not it's, even it's home not from work that at that easy point. To do. So. so I don't like mandates like this. So may is fine, or shall re, re, not required, but uh, encouraged <laughs> to take advantage, which is what it says above in the preamble. I don't know why it should differ in the implementation in stringency. Does anybody from the policy committee want to speak well, to this? Well, Leon's here and yeah. uh, Maria's here. <laughs> I, I can tell you, I think the intent was that it was not going to be a mandate, um, but obviously we can take it back right. to the policy committee and I'm fairly certain they'll agree. Well, I'd like to see that happen myself. Yeah, I could do that. Yes. So, uh, can we have... Um, a move, motion to warn the tobacco prohibition, 5180. Which just has an addition to it. To yeah, it's just total language change, right? Well, they're trying to address vaping and oh, vaping, yes, right. all of that. So that's a new thing. They needed to get it in there, understandably. But I thought you guys should know. Mm -hmm. so. Right. So, and Are they trying you to make it so that you can like, right. get it on, on the premises, really? Correct, yeah. So how are they going to enforce that? That's a good question. But I think you start with a policy. Yep. And then uh, so somebody is going to have to figure out how it's administered. Exactly. Okay. All right. It's a different branch. <laughs> well, I'll take a more of a look at it after we run it. I would make a motion to warn uh, policy 5180, tobacco prohibition. I'll, I'll second. Any discussion now? All in favor? Aye. 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 
Okay, 7100 board member education to adopt. I'll make the motion. Someone can second. I'm voting against it, but I'm just getting it out to the, the table. Uh, can we just not vote yet? And wait for okay. the okay. That's, That's fine. That's fine. We'll just, we'll just send it back with the yeah. comments that we had. Um, correspondence to the board, 7192. Was there anything to say about that? No, nothing pretty straightforward. New. Nothing new. Nothing new. Is it? It's what we discussed last. Um, yeah. I was uh, Sean Marie brought something? No, it was the name of the person trying to make sure that you reveal who you were and so forth in terms of right. the when, when you write, full name, you have to address put your telephone name on the yeah. telephone. Yeah. Okay. Is yeah. that all supported in statute? The, the issues of saying where you live and, you know? I don't know. I mean, is that a requirement at the state level in terms of, I think the name's important, but I don't know that I necessarily want to reveal where I live. There, the other policies that exist for that ask that people, based on their comments, be identified. I mean, I'm here now, I should be saying I'm Leon Johnson and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a member of the North Pendleton, so such a right. along that line. And so if I had something that I was bringing forth so that uh, everybody will be responsible for their, their uh, having uh, control uh, individuals within their community or within their school district to be able to come in on certain things as opposed to somebody from outside coming right, in I get and, that. and just saying, mm -hmm. I want right. this and I want that. And you say, well, who's that person? Nobody even really recognizes. So there is something. You need to verify that you're a voting member of that, yeah. of that district. Right. But there. now, it, that does raise one question, I think, and that is, a person who may be an employee of that district, as, a, as well as a member of the district. And they may not wish to identify themselves if they have a complaint. Uh, in, then they wouldn't probably be making public comment. Yeah. Another well, this years. is a letter, though, right? You could make a letter. That would be a correspondence. I mean, basically, you're going to be silencing them, I think, if they have something that they think someone might take offense to, and they work. I, I understand the other point. You do want to know that they're from your district, if it's addressed to one particular district. You do want to have a sense of who, you know, you want to know who they are. Uh, I don't know what to do about the other part of it, though. Well, would that be the kind of thing that could then be addressed under um, executive, session. executive session for mm -hmm. um, uh, grievance or personnel or whatever? Yeah. yeah. I think there's mm -hmm. other venues for issues Unless like that. Unless they're, they're objecting to a board member's mm -hmm. actions. Somebody could send a letter about these. It's possible. No. <laughs> yeah, no, it's possible. Well, I guess I get that point. I don't know how you get around it other than... Yeah. Someone other can matters. send a letter on their behalf. Yeah. But someone else would have to be willing to put their name to it. Yeah, okay. Well, there are ways they might get around it. I, I I think it's difficult to deal with because, you know, you, you do want a sense that this just isn't a crank letter, and uh, that if it's not signed, that it typically looks like that, doesn't it? Okay, well, I'll call the question on that one. Yeah, did we move to, uh, I'd no, make a motion we? to adopt. Yes, we did. Uh, okay. 7192. Okay. All in favor? All in favor. Aye. Aye. I'm abstaining. Superintendent's report, he's not here, so. Um, chair's report. Okay, so enrollments. Um, I sent some of that around. There are 18 students at 
between Shaftesbury Highland Hall and South Shire. Uh, there are 115 at the village school. And then there are, I don't think this number is correct, is it? No, it's not. The pre-K the pre -K <laughs> number is still incorrect mm -hmm. because they had children who weren't in our district and um, we had to tell them that they weren't in our district. And yeah, but we also had children who are in our district that weren't on the list. Okay, so that's that's the last thing we have to take care of? I think so, but I've been back and forth a little bit more, well, just before I got here, you know, yeah. with that again. Okay. So, and yesterday with Tori, so it's not correct. Yeah, still. okay. So, it's more than 29. It's more I'll than 29. That. Right. In and it's more like 33 for North yeah, Bennington. I think yeah. so, yeah. And then we... What I found was looking at our list, and this had not really occurred last year or before, I think, much, but that, that there were people who claimed they were in our district or were classified as our district, and they were nowhere near our district. Right. So I sent her the tools that I use, which mm -hmm. some of which came from SU, uh, the street act index for North Bennington, you know, where what addresses are incorporated, uh, the map, and the map of the boundary through Bennington College, because it, it uh, sort of traipses right across commons, and then goes straight down, and that I found uh, several years ago, there were there was somebody on the one side or the other, I forget what it was, but, but there I, were I had to get the uh, the regional regional uh, Bennington County Regional Commission right. to tell me where the line was. So because there were a lot of streets in North Bennington that I knew were not in North Bennington. Yeah. Because we got we go I go to every trustees meeting, so if they've adopted a new road, mm -hmm. I would know it. Yes. <laughs> And there were separate, it was just, it was odd. Well, yeah, the Harrington Road one was. Well, how about way Edith's Way? Yeah. Edith's Way, Tinkham Road? I mean, those, those, those places are aren't Chester, North Bennington. Yeah. They're, they're well away from us. So, uh, hopefully that will help them sort it out because I did delegate the task to them to, because they deal with the families, so, to take their information, get documentation, verify. And I'm okay with correcting it, <coughs> doing it, correcting it. It's just, I wasn't, I was kind of surprised that there were so many errors. At any rate, so we probably have 32, 33, which yeah, is what we had last year, I think. I think it's 33, but yeah. like, we're, it's not final yet. Yeah. So, you know, we're, you know, we lost some people to moves to other, you know, housing opportunities for them in different towns, some of them across the state line, and uh, at, at the village school, and then there were graduations from sixth graders leaving various of the other in other schools and not being replaced. Highland Hall did get replacements. Uh, South Shore stayed pretty much where they were. Shaftesbury dropped one or two. So we end up with one less in the other schools. Uh, I don't know what that will mean for equalized pupils. It will mean we lose a little bit, but it is a rolling average, two-year average, so it won't be a steep drop. SBSU is our website. We talked about that last month, and I have nothing to add, but I would like to get our our uh, a, our residency policy on site and our tuition payment policy and hopefully maybe I can get the residency applications that, that I use on site so that people could actually <coughs> download it or 
figure out those policies from the SU website. Okay, so um, yeah, the Department of Public Safety grant follow-up. I will pass out my a copy of my final letter because I did send it to you, but I won't read it. But it seemed like I've got I've got another one here. So I know. Tim, have you read it? You didn't get one, did you? <laughs> <laughs> is this what you emailed around? What? Yes. This is what you okay. I emailed it yesterday. Okay, so he emailed it. I mean, I read it too, but well, no, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, this morning. Yeah, this morning. Yeah, yeah. You're <laughs> need to That's be important. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So it's a lot longer than I set out to write, but I think it finally covered all the bases and did it in a comp fairly comprehensive way. And uh, if I may, I will just quote the final paragraph. Maybe. Or the final three, I'll just paraphrase. Our position is that students in the publicly financed education system attending a school owned by a Vermont district should be eligible to have their building secured with the assistance of Department of Public Safety grants should the application process find the grant application meets the qualifications and, uh, and uh, need evaluated in processing these grants and it rises to the top in their competitive uh, grading of it. Uh, we are not asking that they reevaluate those grants that they've already issued because that would harm other students in the state. And I don't want to do that, but I do ask them that they um, provide us the opportunity to apply if they're future funds and uh, be put into the competition so that they actually get it actually gets reviewed and maybe we'll get some assistance with uh, additional security at this at, in this building uh, and I pointed out throughout the body of the text that uh, you know it, it's really money from one hand or the other. You know, it's either from the Department of Public Safety or it's going to come from the Ed Fund. Because I think this district must pay for some of the upgrades necessary uh, according to uh, the authorities, that, you know, the Department of Public Safety representatives who visited this facility and commented on what they thought we ought to be, ought to be doing to improve security. Um, and then my final paragraph is <clears throat> the state has supported a goal that students from every district be thought of as our students no matter the district of residence within a given governance structure in Act 46. This idea has extension at the state level of governance to all the state's students. Policy must think of all of them and act accordingly. Yet here the AOE itself makes lines where they're really aren't lines, and those distinctions from the moral and policy perspective of attempting to protect Vermont's K-12 students are without merit and distinguish invidiously between classes of public education students. With this in mind, the North Bennington Graded School District Prudential Committee is publishing this letter beyond the relevant parties in the AOE and EPS administrations. Very, very well done. Make lots of great input from a number of you all. I think it, you know, I did notice today that another four hundred thousand um, dollars were recently acquired. Uh huh. But um, this money is going to be used for. It uh, sounds like uh, programs that. Encourage people to 
if they see something, say something, kind of things, or, oh, yeah. um, you know. You know, like, but but I did not see that any more money was available specifically for um, infrastructure. Well, I, since Tim is here, I asked. I spoke to him this afternoon about just sort of running through what what we asked for in the grant, mm -hmm. because I, I think we need to consider our our share of this and how we wish to tackle it. So. Um, we, based on the way the, the grant was set up, there were certain things that were rated higher on the scale. So, so we had um, estimates done on a bunch of different things. The, the things that rose up for us there were um, the, the door, and obviously that's a piece that we felt so strongly about that we went forward with anyway, even right. being denied grant. So that piece is already off the table. So that was one of the, the major pieces that was um, brought up. And it came, we, we ended up using um, the local people, so it's, it's, it's about the same price, but this was, the, the quote was for about $4,300 from this particular company. Um, the, the second piece on it was, we had sort of no way of communicating throughout the building, so that was one of the ones that was, that was high on the list of being able to announce something going on. So um, putting a PA system throughout the building. Um, was another one that we had looked at, and that come that that came in. Um, we had another quote, but this one was uh, for about eight thousand dollars to put PA systems throughout, and um, and they were giving nonprofit discounts and stuff like that. So there were there were a couple benefits to that. So eight is with the nonprofit. Profit. So this that's with yeah. the nonprofit mm -hmm. discount. So it comes out to about eight thousand dollars for the PA system. The um, the other piece was um, securing the outer perimeter with um, fobs and things like that and, or keep and and that was really once that front door has been done we've actually secured the perimeter so this actually falls l lower down my <coughs> list of priorities um, but this was one of the things that was within that grant and, and so we we put it forth to you guys to, to make that request um, and that would have been about a ten thousand dollar Thing. The, the cards are, you know, it would have been all the exterior doors, the cards for all those kinds of things. The big piece around this that, that I still think is something that could be investigated down the line is, is keeping track of comings and goings. Um, and that's what the of, fob would do. Instead of just because having the a card, key, right. we actually know. Okay. Like, if size, someone comes in in the weekend, mm -hmm. we know who it was. Mm -hmm. And if someone, if, if, we, if there was ever somebody who we felt like we needed to mm -hmm. exclude from the building, we could just turn off literally a flip mm -hmm. of a switch. It's mm -hmm. not, we have to get their key, we have to track mm -hmm. them right. down. Mm -hmm. It's literally mm -hmm. just turn their, their, right. their mm -hmm. key card off and they can't get in. Mm -hmm. If one gets lost, we just turn that key card off mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about it. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, the, I think there's a lot of keys out there for this building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Just because we <laughs> put behind them. In part because we have people that use it. Um, so that would, oh yeah, so absolutely. So that was a that was a substantial one. The thing though that wasn't actually in the in the um, the grant because they, they did not characterize it as um, rising to this level is the phone system. I think by upgrading our phone system, we could actually potentially. I, I would do this would be my first priority um, before the PA system and stuff like that because. I would want to see how well the pager system works on the new, because our phones are so old and quiet and some of them don't work. But if, if they were all working, maybe that would actually be pretty sufficient for communication within our building. Um, and surprisingly, this came in much better than I thought. It's even lower than I thought it was, right? right? So um, to do, and, and I think we may end up needing a, a bit more than this, but the, the initial quote was for around eleven thousand dollars to do our whole phone so system. So could you explain the other piece to me how the phone? I'm sorry to interrupt, but how the phone would mm -hmm. be in lieu of an amount of. So that's what it, that's the system we use now. Is we page on the phones for our clear the halls drill. Okay. It doesn't work on on some of the phones because they're just old and the, and the speakers don't work very well. Um, the connections in some of the rooms okay. don't work. They don't ring. They don't. Um, but you can you can create. They now have phones that have. Um, flashing lights on them and okay. stuff like okay. that okay. that that can also be so there's things like that that can be added to it the other piece is um, 
uh, outside of the safety and security, or part of the safety and security pieces, um, there's a piece around 911 compliance mm. that's out there. And the, the idea was that they wanted every school in the, in the state to become 911 9 compliant within a certain time frame. Very few of the schools are actually going to make it. I think they wanted to have it done by 2020. And I think most of the schools are saying that they're not going to be able to do that. So the 911 compliance piece that they're looking for is that every room in the building could have one button to press 911. So just a single button, and that would call 911. And 911, the dispatcher, would actually know which room it was in the building by having these upgraded phone systems. So they would know exactly where it was happening from. So even though you might only have four lines in the school, I think that's what we have, they would know which room was calling so that they could pinpoint exactly where the emergency was. Um, I think in our area, um, the, I, if, I, if the article I read is, and, and someone from the SU might know better, but I think some of the schools are hoping to be 911 compliant by the date, but I don't think most of them are going to be able to do that. Um, this would allow us to build that into this piece as, as well as in, in improving our paging system and just overall. Um, so, and then after we saw that, then I'd look at, you know, maybe not the whole PA system, but mm -hmm. one in the gymnasium yeah. or something mm -hmm. like right. that. You know, or like it, some sort of, some sort of combination <laughs> yeah. of these might be mm -hmm. a more efficient use of our right. resources. Um, so I would, this is the thing I would probably recommend before doing some of the others. The other piece was the film on the, the, um, the glass Rolling out there. And it's um, costly per square foot, but it's a reasonable, it's one we can absorb, I think, pretty easily. I think we could do most of the, um, the I, I want to do a, some more research on it. our initial research, and we put it into the, to the, the piece around the grant to give to you guys, came in at around Nine hundred to a thousand dollars, eight hundred to a thousand dollars in materials. That didn't include the installation and stuff like that. It's supposed to be pretty easy to install. I might mm -hmm. consider having somebody, you know, do it or demonstrate it for us or something like that. Because it's 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 like putting in um, tinting mm -hmm. or um, mm -hmm. shading in mm -hmm. windows. And what that what it allows the window to do is um, you, it's not going to stop a bullet. A bullet will go through it, but the glass won't shatter. So even if they shoot it and then take a bat to it, it holds up for something like five minutes longer than it would take. You know, so it doesn't it doesn't stop, but it slows down, and that's the whole point of the, the material. Um, so that is uh, a piece that I think we can we can start to do more quickly. The other piece uh, along the lines of those was frosting. Um, so some of our garden level windows mm. are frosted. We want to frost all of them so that you can't see directly in, right. but that's again a, a fairly simple um, fix. And, and they would just get frosted and not that sheeting? Uh, I think I think we'd do the, the door area first and mm -hmm. then, you know, and then if we had extra funds, slowly do the, mm -hmm. the, 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 we're lucky in that all of our garden windows, yes, they're, but all the first floor windows are actually pretty high, right. you know, mm -hmm. um, so that they are not going to need to be need to be done with this, or at least the recommendation was not that they would need no, to okay. be done. Okay. So it was, we are just talking about... It was just the front, that whole floor. front entryway, yeah. and then and the garden entry. level windows, and then like the back door that has the, door. the, the, oh, yeah, the right. big windows yeah. and stuff like that. Um, in yeah. the, the gym door, no, they don't think it would need to be done. Yeah, because that's got wire glass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so those, I think, are, are easy, one, easier ones for us to tick off over the course of the year. This one's a, a bigger lift, but I think it's, it's, it would be the next big one that I would do rather than doing the, 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 the cards for the building or the, the, the full PA system. We also bought radios. That was part of the, the grant, but we, we, bought, we bought the radios that we're going to now use, um, and we've tested them throughout the building um, to use during recess and um, we're hoping I, I think um, well, I need to test them I haven't gone I haven't done it all the way from Highland Hall Gardens but I think mm -hmm. they should be able to work all the way from Highland Hall Gardens potentially even from Mile Round Woods to talk back to the school that'd be great so they yeah. got a, a set of motor, motor, motor radios mm -hmm. um, is this something that could 
wait till we start our budget discussion for this? Yep. But I, I would I was going to propose that Tim give us the, all the proposals. Yep. Can you lay it out for us happy to do that. his priorities and what the cost is. And then, you know, it's clear we're gonna pay some of it, but mm -hmm. not most of it. So yeah, I'm happy to make Including copies. Including what you've already expensed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is currently uh, now our teachers taking a radio out onto the playground? Or? I, we need to do a training with them, but I've, okay. I, yeah. I've gone out to the furthest and, and gone to all the different mm -hmm. corners of the You're building and, and mm -hmm. I can talk to somebody in the, in the nurse's office or at the main mm -hmm. desk. And so it seems to be working. We mm -hmm. just need to teach people how to use them mm -hmm. effectively. Mm -hmm. um, like, Laura, like Laura will be able to take them out for gym classes and mm -hmm. stuff like mm -hmm. that is the, is the idea once we start to really understand their usage. They seem to work pretty well. Um, you got a charge station in the in yeah. the office, and they take them out, put them back. Exactly, together. that would be the idea. Yep. Yeah. So we got we got eight of them. So the nurse the nurse could always have one. I could always have one. There'd be one at the front desk, and then a couple other people could have them as well. Is that okay with everybody? You know, my suggestion about laying it out what, what the costs are. I don't really need to see the, I mean, we could see the, what they propose doing, but. Mm -hmm. um, I think there'd probably be slight modifications out. in these yeah. estimates, but right. I, don't, I think they're pretty good ballparks of what it right. And uh, then, we, then we can talk about it, because budget season is coming up here. So I'll, I'm happy to write up a, a formal listing of them and Thank what you. I would recommend what I would recommend mm -hmm. as the, mm -hmm. the priorities based on I mean we had three different law enforcement officers come through and mm -hmm. sort of say what they felt were the, the biggest things okay great so the final item on my agenda unless there's something else I don't know about I can't remember is uh, the Board of Vermont Board of Education in game <laughs> and uh, also I'll pass can we pass these around here? I've got enough here but yeah just pass them around uh, these this was something that uh, Maria and uh, I and with some some well, additional he, help yeah, yeah. before it wrote which is basically a rehash of our section nine proposal but very pretty concise a twist. and a twist <laughs> a twist okay you described the twist oh yeah. boy don't put me on the uh, well you know I, you said twist and I'm i know i wrote it so long ago though i was i was just thinking i was so intelligent and, I was thinking, mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. and uh, maria said that the point of doing this and sending it in is to uh, she felt that at the uh, September. September 25th was it yeah meeting uh, that the w in in which you know they had the board sitting up on a stage you had to go up on the stage to talk to them it, it was it, the optics of that were not very good and it they were intentional so um, I was going to go up because Maria was shy but then she <laughs> found her help. courage. <laughs> found her courage. <laughs> so she came up there with me, and because it wasn't a real stage. It wasn't real stage. It was real. Stage. <laughs> but, I was real. Right. The audience. It was terrifying. <laughs> but then they made me mad, so I thought. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the point I was getting to. Right. She she was uh, she was observing while I was uh, not reading, but paragraphing what I had to say and uh, she said that Dan French was really the secretary was really trying to get us to say we're fine where we are and I was saying exactly the opposite in my my piece but what I was politely. saying but politely and uh, Maria felt we ought to maintain that position very strongly it unfortunately it has not gone out in a timely manner because I got distracted by this safety security grant, but uh, it is there, and um, maybe it needs a paragraph to say, to say, well, we know you can't 
do what we ask you to do. 